So it has been quite a week so far. Um, we brought home a new milk cow and her calf. Friends of ours were um, selling her because they downsized their homestead and did not have the pasture. They moved from one homestead to another. And when the snow all melted, they realized that they did not have enough pasture for a cow and calf. And they decided to stick with their milk goats and offered us this cow and her heifer calf at an amazing price. And of course we couldn't say no. So we are getting used to milking two cows and um, we're still adjusting to setting up our rotational grazing, which that has been going very, very well. And the cows are catching on really fast. And the other thing is summer vacation has started here. Um, last week was our children's last week of school. So Monday was the first day of summer vacation. So uh, we are adjusting to brand new routines and schedules and a lot less of a rigid schedule, especially in the morning. So tonight we have a potluck at church and I am going to make a chicken and rice casserole and the chicken and rice casserole calls for cream of celery soup, cream of mushroom soup, and cream of chicken soup. So I'm going to make the cream of chicken and cream of celery soup. I'm not going to use the cream of mushroom because I don't have any fresh mushrooms. And although I do believe I could find some if I went foraging, I do not have the time to go foraging for mushrooms today. So I'm just going to be using cream of chicken and cream of celery soup in my casserole for tonight's potluck. And I have rarely, if ever, in my 20 years of homemaking, bought cream of something soup. Um, my mom made the cream of soups and that's how I've always done, but I've never actually written it all down until I started sharing recipes on Instagram and YouTube. So today I am going to show you how I make cream of soups and hopefully it'll be simple enough that you feel like you can dive right in and not have to buy any more tin can soups. The ingredients are very simple, whole foods, and you will be surprised at how simple it is. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with cooking some rice and I've got some broth and some chicken and we're going to cook the rice and some of the broth but we're also going to use some of the broth to make our cream soup. So first up I'm going to make the cream of celery soup and for that I am going to chop up my celery real fine using some of the leaves as well. Now this is store-bought celery because I do not yet have celery in my garden. So the first thing you're going to need is three to four tablespoons of fat. You can use butter or tallow or lard. I am using bacon grease because that's what I have lots of right now. So now we're just gonna add our celery into the fat and saute it a little bit so that it releases its flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit of onion as well. You could even add some garlic if you want. So once your veggies are sauteed, when they're tender and it's just starting to change color, like these have started turning a little brown, then I'm gonna add my flour. And I've got about four tablespoons of flour. And this is going to make a paste. You're just gonna stir this fat and the veggies around until the, you've got no more dry flour left. And now you're gonna add your liquid. 
you need one cup of liquid. So I've got, I need one cup of liquid. So I've got half a cup of chicken broth and half a cup of cream. You can use water and milk or just chicken broth. And now we're just gonna simmer this until it gets thick. This is also where you add salt and pepper to taste. I'm gonna start with about a fourth a teaspoon of salt and about a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. You can see how this is thickening up real nice. It's perfect. All right, there we go. That is one recipe's worth of cream of celery soup. Now, if you were doing cream of mushroom soup, you would do exactly the same. You would take your mushrooms, saute them in the fat, and then proceed from there. So we're gonna set this aside, and we're gonna proceed with the cream of chicken soup. So now for the cream of chicken soup, we're gonna start out the same way. We're gonna take our three tablespoons of fat, and I'm gonna saute some onions in here, and this is where you would put your little pieces of chicken in too if you were um, wanting just plain cream of chicken soup. But since I already am going to have chicken in my casserole, I'm not going to put any um, chicken in my cream of soup. So I add my flour to the fat, make a paste, and then add my liquid. And then we add our seasonings, salt and pepper, and then we just simmer it until it is the desired thickness. So there we go. We've got one contain one tin cans worth of cream of chicken soup, one tin cans worth of cream of celery soup. However, if you've been on my channel, I'm sure that you're wondering if I'm making only a nine by nine pan or a nine by 13 pan. Um, <laughs> so now that I've showed you how to make one tin cans worth, because most of the recipes that you come across are gonna ask for one can of cream of something soup. So I'm gonna write the recipes as, you know, so that it makes the same amount as one can of store-bought cream of something soup. But now I gotta set this aside and I gotta make a big batch of cream of soup for this casserole that I'm putting together because one will be for potluck and one will be for the family. So I need, I need six cans of cream of soup. So I've made two, I need to go make four more. And when I do that, I'm going to show you another trick for what to do if your cream soup doesn't thicken. So if you're like me, and you get overconfident in your ability to make cream soups and you stop measuring your ingredients, you might get to the point where your cream soup just doesn't thicken up. Um, and that's usually because um, you didn't add enough flour, which usually starts because I didn't add enough fat so then I didn't need enough flour to make everything to soak up all the fat. So what you can do then is you take a gravy shaker and you put two parts of flour and three parts water. So that's two parts of flour to three parts water. And you shake it up real well. And then when your cream soup is simmering, you add that. So if your cream soup is simmering and it's just not getting thick, 
that's when you can stir in some more flour and water mixture and simmer some more. And just like that, you've got a nice thick cream of chicken soup or whatever cream soup that you are making. And now we're ready to assemble our casserole. So I've layered in the bottom of my pan my cooked chicken. It's actually, it was some canned chicken and canned turkey. Um, and then I cooked some jasmine rice in chicken broth with seasonings in my Instapot. And I'm just gonna layer that rice right on top of my chicken and turkey. And once the chicken and rice are layered in, then you're ready to add your cream soups on the very top of the casserole. So cream soups, when you buy them at the grocery store, really aren't that expensive. They're usually under $2 a can. So you might be wondering if it's really worth the time and effort to make your own cream soups. And I'm gonna tell you why we choose to make our own cream soups. Um, number one, the cream soups that you buy at the store have anywhere from 15 to 20 ingredients. And most of those ingredients are synthetic flavorings and colorings and seed and nut oils, all things that our family tries to avoid, avoid whenever possible. When you make your own cream soups, you have four to six whole food ingredients. And these are a lot more nutritious than the cream soups that you buy at the grocery store. So yes, the added nutrition and the exclusion of flavor enhancers and other ingredients that we try to avoid makes making my own cream soups definitely worth the time that it takes. You can make your cream soups ahead of time. They will keep in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. And I have even frozen some cream soups and they come out of the freezer just fine. So the original recipe called for buttered Ritz cracker crumbs um, on top of the casserole. But I have all these sourdough cracker crumbs that end up in the bottom of my container of sourdough crackers and I'm just gonna crush these up even finer and sprinkle the top of my casserole with these. Um, when you want to serve this casserole, you will bake it at 350 until it's warm all the way through. And the time that this will take depends on if you are putting your casserole into the oven when it's still warm, like mine is right now, or if you're gonna refrigerate it for a couple days, but you'll need to figure from 30 to 60 minutes. Well, this brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for being here and watching. Don't forget your complete recipe is in the description and good luck with making your cream soups. And I hope you never have to buy another tin can of soup at the grocery store. Um, don't forget to subscribe and share and watch all our other videos on homesteading, lifestyle hacks, and recipes, and gardening. And until next week, we will be right here on our little corner of land, um, taking care of the animals, working in our garden, and of course, spending lots of time in the kitchen prepping nutritious food for my hardworking family.